Hey, what is up everybody? Um, today on the Collector's Company YouTube channel, we are starting a podcast that we'll be trying to do every week, featuring members of the team such as myself, John, Benny, Will, the owner of the team, Jesse, and Glenn. So um, yeah, we're just going to be talking about Dragon Ball stuff specifically, um, go into thoughts on the meta, whatever, stuff that might be coming up. Just, you know, every bit, anything Dragon Ball TCG related, we'll be doing today. So um, I'll let the team introduce themselves, um, starting with Benny. How are you going, Benny? Are you doing good? Yeah, I'm doing amazing, bro. So, yeah, uh, for those that don't know, um, I'm Benny. So, I've been playing the card game team since set three, uh, just after post mecha ban. So, yeah, I've been in the game for a while now. That is true. I remember playing Benny back in the early days of set three, and uh, it's not been good. He's been destroying me since. Yeah, you gotta you gotta talk <laughs> you gotta talk yourself up, Benny. You're uh, you wanna oh, oh yeah one what of the countries want, like... one of the country's best players. We, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will say, I thank you, thank you. I will say that our team is pretty stacked, not to brag or anything, but it's just facts. Unfortunately, yeah. is how it is. We got the best players, or most of them anyway. Uh, we also have Will here. Uh, how are you doing, Will? Yep. I'm the affirmation, affirmation, not the best player. No, um, look, <laughs> people know me from around, but if you don't, I'm, you know, down and on player. Do a bit of commentary. Occasionally, I'll win a game here and there. Usually playing Golden Freezer. I think that, that pretty much sums it up. Of course, of course, I remember you've always done historically well with Golden Freezer, and Golden Freezer, I personally think, is actually also in a pretty good spot right now, so that's also oh, yeah. nice for you. Uh, Glenn, how are you doing, Glenn? I'm good, I'm good. I still have yet to invest in a webcam, despite <laughs> two years of lockdown, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> um, I started playing, my first box, I think, was set six, actually, so um, Green Broly was my first deck, the starter Broly leader. And then I've pretty much just played off meta stuff ever since. That's the way. <laughs> it's always fun to get like you're competitive and also you're fun. Healthy balance, healthy balance is all very important in this game. And uh, the man of the hour, the owner of uh, the collector's company, Jesse, how are you doing today? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, yeah, I'm not a competitive DBS player myself, but you know I've been selling singles for the game since about set three and. Um, Decided to pick these guys off when uh, you know I wanted to start a team and you know get amongst the community and yeah I've I don't you know I'm not don't know too much specifics of the cards but like I've been around trading cards for a long time so um, hopefully I can add something to uh, to the chat. Of course, awesome. of course. Yeah, Jesse is um if you do want to buy singles by the way if you're listening, collectors company best place to get singles in australia honestly i i know this, I, <laughs> I know <laughs> no, this doesn't have to be a plug I'm, uh, yeah but that's just I a fact that's it. actually it's, just yeah. a fact honestly like i remember i was like usually pretty good about not buying singles i knew my limits but then like jesse has like just too many good deals so I just, he's i've literally just been supplying the company like my paycheck just goes to collect this company that's <laughs> can i just address i'll just address one thing if we have any customers out there listening right now like i know um i know the dispatch times for new sets is like pretty long like it's a bit i'm a bit ashamed of it sometimes but we're, you know every time a new set comes out we're just opening more and more cases and it's just like it's only me and my me and my partner and it's just uh it's pretty crazy at, yeah. at the office so um just okay. uh i really appreciate you guys being patient and yeah so just uh thanks for that i remember when i went to the warehouse i remember just walking in oh, and there was yeah. just like a whole wall of just cases it was actually insane <laughs> so many boxes so many boxes you have to open it is full never on. seen that many cards in my life <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Anyway, so yeah, that is it. yeah, that is the team, guys. So uh, we're we'll gonna. Oh, wait, wait, you, wait! I was gonna say one thing. You forgot about yourself. Would you like to introduce Me? yourself, John? Oh, uh, look, I, I'm not, I'm not anyone special. I just commentate sometimes, and you know, I'm just a, uh, average at best. You know, <laughs> for those who don't know me, I'm John. Uh, won a couple of events here in OCE. I'm not that, I'm not that bad at the game. Kind of don't play as much competitively since we've gone into lockdown. Um, but I am planning to come back out of retirement once, you know, the, the world opens up. So we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, I'm just um, a DBS player, you know, for fun. Good times. <laughs> awesome, awesome, yeah. yeah. Right, let's get into the main topics then, yeah? The main topics. Yeah. So the, the first thing we've got here, it's kind of just like a broader topic, just kind of like, you know, getting everyone's feels for it. So um, this particular meta, honestly, is pretty open, which is quite nice. It's very... Um, very refreshing when there isn't a go-to deck all the time like we've had in the past for example like mecha freezer was a pretty powerful deck and even before that that um you can make the argument for vegex so um the first stuff we're going to talk about is generally what metas everyone particularly likes in the team um seems though this meta is again not a really tier zero meta i'm personally of the fan of like uh not necessarily triangle meta but kind of like an anything goes kind of meta like you can win with anything if you're more skills 
but it also makes it so the better you are at the game it's like if you're bad at the game you can't really hide yourself like hide like yourself being bad by playing a broken deck you genuinely have to be really good at the game and that's why i think lately especially in these online events you actually see a lot of high level of play towards end of tournaments because it's just genuinely you have to be like insane at the game to actually win an event so it's a bit harder to win now so it's um yeah nice seeing um like just the diverse meta showing more skillful players yeah i was just thinking that like with the you know when um when benny won with uh icarus like sort of when there's one deck that's like really prevalent you know just make like you know just making a few tweaks and few changes and the first person that's actually you know makes those changes and is innovative will usually come up with a win so i'm just like yeah the reason i brought that question i was just like see if anyone just prefers that that really just dominant deck and i'm like okay well is there anything i can find just to like you know make it just like stronger than everyone else playing it and then uh you know get the results You guys want to go in this, Benny or Will? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, at that time when I won with uh, Gohan Icarus, so only there was only two tops of the deck, so it was only Giancarlo and Seraphim. So after that weekend, when I won with it as well, literally the whole weekend was just like yellow Icarus Gohan. I think one of the, one of the main cards that I added was Frost Deadly Poison in the main board, which literally legit saved my... Um, yeah, saved a lot of games for me as well, especially against uh, Sam. So, yeah, I mean, like, I always make, like, even if you take a deck, like, you you definitely want to add your own uh, tweaks and tech cards into it, especially in best of one. 100%. 100%. Um, as for metas I prefer, it's it's not so much the, the triangle or the tier one or whatever. It's a meta where it feels like there's some intentionality to it. A, a meta that I point to for this uh, that's a little bit back was sort of the surge meta where it felt like Bandai knew exactly what they wanted the game balanced around and how to build to that accordingly. And it, without getting too much into my thoughts on the ban list, because I feel that's a whole other episode in and of itself, it feels like lately Bandai hasn't really figured out what it wants the direction of the game to be, what cards it wants to be powerful, what cards it doesn't. But that said, last meta I was a big fan of. We had a lot of fun decks, a lot of play styles represented as well. You had control, you had aggro, you had mid-range. So yeah, we, we've been healthy for a while, but I I think it's only going to take a little thing to break it, and that always worries me. Yeah, I feel like what ends up happening a lot, people um in this community is <laughs> like a lot, ever, there's a lot of like complaints about broken cards in this commu mm. um, in the community. Like I think the the two biggest ones recently, or I guess the big three, was like, yep. oh, Mecha Freezer does all the stuff. To be fair, Mecha Freezer did deserve to get banned 100%. Dark Broly, again, another example of something that did deserve to get eroded, like being able to play 30k vanillas for free. Very impressive, people complain about it, you know. Uh, then uh, King Vegeta as well. Oh, wait, I had one turn and lost. That was another one. These are all fair complaints, to be fair, but, yeah. <laughs> but like, people, like, the community is very loud and it's actually also mm. refreshing that bandai does pay a lot of attention to the community that being said though it's kind of um this kind of leads into like the next topic i guess is like i feel like yeah. it also to an extent makes bandai a little hesitant to release more mm. over the top archetypes because the latest set that came out which is on um, the same showdown set um i'm under the impression that it is a weaker set compared to other sets like the archetypes mm. aren't mm. that strong even the set before this one the archetypes didn't feel as strong either playable for sure but not as strong but this set no like yeah. like i look at the green leaders of this new set and it's like is this a set one leader or it's like that <laughs> but uh, i will yeah. say <laughs> i will say though i do think they know how to make money though because some of the srs and SERs in this set are insanely good oh uh, yeah the the yellow negate the the one with like turlers absolutely just ruining goku's day that spr looks uh, forbidden power. Forbidden yeah. power. Forbidden power. That's yeah. all. Yeah. I love, I love the card out on that one. I have three the of them on my desk. Yeah. If you want some, Will. No, yeah, no, 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 that no. is gorgeous looking. I'm, I'm dubious about the card itself, but the art is. That's like kind of weird because it feels like it's a side grade of um, flying Nimbus, mainly because it just doesn't, mm. doesn't negate the attack, but it does have more. Um, it's a bit more of a flexible card, but um, yeah, to an extent, yeah, to an extent, yeah, and then also as well, I think like, that's. Yeah, go ahead. I think that's kind of how they've tried to balance some of the newer cards, though, you know, by giving them utility on either turn. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> the trade off is like, 
you don't effect. get to negate that in that initial yeah. attack um but obviously you still get the floodgate afterwards is even similar to dormant right like dormant's a strong yeah, card dormant's or as it was <laughs> had its time in the sun um but you still have to sort of deal with that initial attack unless you're mm -hmm. cheating out blockers from your drop area um and then the obviously the turn sort of stops after that but dormant's still dead on your turn at least with this new forbidden power if you've got the energy up and you need to get rid of like a a pesky barrier card um Damn that boy <laughs> Get that boy out of the way. Yeah. 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 It's also yeah. a leader locked to yellow or mono yellow. I forget which exactly, which is. It is yellow. Oh. If you lead a card, it's, it's yellow, yellow, yeah. Though. So, yeah, so that's another consideration over in this. Yeah. Well, um. Well, what are some of the SRs you guys think? I have a, like my own mental list of SRs and SP SCRs as well from this set that I think would be like the ones you should get. What do you guys, what are some of your hot, hot picks for the new set? I'll start off with you. What do you reckon some of the hot takes are? Are we talking art or are we talking power level here? A bit of both. You can go for both. You know, your favorite right. card um, and your favorite like just good card. So art, I think it is just that that uh, Turles negate yeah. there. <laughs> yep. yep. As for playability, um... S SRs, it's definitely the, the new Goku, the one that is a crushable light card. I've yep. been testing that a lot in a few yellow decks, and that card is as good as it sounds. It yeah. comes down for one mana as long as you can, you know, fill up your extra card and your energy with, uh, with sorry, your drop area and your ex uh, energy with extra cards, which is not hard to do in yellow with uh, Power of a Super Saiyan being a thing. Yep. Draws you a card. It's usually stopping at least two attacks between the tap down and the blocker. Yep. Card is insane. As for the SCRs this time around, Pan is definitely the money card in my opinion there, as whilst it's not very powerful objectively, like this isn't a Hatch, this isn't a Kai, this isn't a Cell, it's incredibly free in the sort of decks that we want to play it. All you need to be able to do is to just dump four battle cards on the table. That's not hard to do, and it's either a 40k swing with potentially the ability to steal something and swing again at worst, and at best, it's sort of a, a dormant style effect. Like, if Vijex hadn't been nerfed into the ground, this is the <laughs> SCR it would play, in my opinion, because it really wasn't playing an SCR, and this just sort of fits in, and it's just like a free roll if you draw it, doesn't matter if you don't. So I think it's going to be very strong in those situations. Yeah, look, um, I was, when it was first announced, I was under the impression, it's like, why would I ever want to play this over Kai? Kai just does what, the Kai's effect is indeed way stronger, but back to the point you're making, for the decks that it works in, it feels insane. Like, one of the, one of the big vocal points of this game is being able to play things for free. And this card literally says if you have four cards in play, it doesn't matter what turn it is, you get a free 40k swing. Yeah. And also the ability to able to steal an opponent's card is just a very big, like, momentum timing. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you've got the ability to shut out a turn as well to an extent, like, kind of like the dormant-like effects and yeah. even the forbidden power kind of effects. But for sure, the card, um, in testing it, it feels a lot better than what I um initially <laughs> read. So um, it's definitely a lot more suited for aggro decks. Um, yeah, 100% so, agree, yeah. I've been testing that, like, literally, I was playing it for the past two locals, so I've been playing Gogeta Zeno, that's the deck I've been testing. Yeah. Uh, originally, on Tuesday, I was proxying the Pan, but then yeah. I pulled it from a premium pack, so I ended up slotting it in, yeah, Pan has overperformed in what, most of the games. Usually, like, I've I've owned Kai since day one, so, well, pretty much I bought it, so then uh, pretty much yeah. I've owned it since day one, and every time I've played it, I've never regretted, like, playing it, but this yeah. time, I actually think you can consider Pan over Kai. Yeah. Actually, Benny, if I can follow up a question with that there. In Gogeta Zeno, how were you playing the pan? Was it just usually a free 40k? Was it mostly there for the uh, change of heart effect? Was it mostly there for the floodgate? Like, when you were playing it, how were you playing it predominantly? Actually, most of the time, I was actually playing it uh, on my own turn. Because most of the yeah. time, um, for those that think it's, it's it, as easy as it is to flood the board, it's actually pretty hard because your opponent's actually removing some of your battle sure. cards as well. So whenever I played it, I'll... In the last game that I played, it was actually my life as well. But the times that I have played it, or if I didn't meal it, <laughs> like, I was literally hard casting it during my own turn for free. Yeah. So once I've got my four battle cards, with including that Overrealm card, it's much more achievable. So Sure. Yeah. yeah usually on turn three, I'm ready to, like, kind of go in for the kill. But unfortunately, even after uh, all the games I've played, I've never stolen a like opponent's battle card. Uh, yeah. Battle yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. Usually when I play it, it's pretty much for the kill already. Yeah, the way I've tested a bit as well, I've been trying it in yeah. Red Broly, just seeing how that goes. And, like, you get you get so many battle cards out for free, and because the deck's just such an aggressive mm -hmm. deck, you just play it, and it's like, okay. It's literally kind of just, like, an additional free overrealm. Like, it was kind of the same how yeah. the red decks before the um the new ruler limit to one. It's like, oh, okay, I get an extra attack. 
for the turn. It just so happens this one's a 40k swing. <laughs> That's like, he better yeah. negate this. So this is probably going through. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, yeah. The pandas definitely felt really good um, in testing it. Um, what about you, Glenn? Do you have any cards that you're um, keen for this set, or are you just kind of like, not really, on any of the SRs or whatnot? Yeah, I mean, historically, being a green player, I was a bit disappointed um, with this set, because yep. there was nothing yep. that really piqued my interest <laughs> yep. too much. My favorite art's probably the the two-drop Vegeta SPR, actually, is kind of that iconic Gallic gun. Um, yeah. But in terms of like SRs, the the blue Kaba isn't too bad. Yeah, um, that card's insane, actually. Yeah, especially in the in the Kaba sort of archetype, right? Because you you have your three energy up and you play it, but then you get to untap two basically if you're playing it on your opponent's turn, um, which is a lot of value realistically. But also kind of in like those mono blue ramp decks where you can just hold energy up and and do whatever. Like in Soul Striker, it's a lot of value on your own turn. Um, ramp ss4 if people are still playing that you know like you can, no. <laughs> you can get a lot of value out of the card yeah. um the hit the hit unison's not too bad but i feel yeah. like the deck that you'd want to play that in the most is probably soul striker and then in soul striker you realistically want to be playing that three cost unison so you can awaken if they're not mm. swinging into you so it's kind of like a, a like it's a hard call to make if you would yeah. run because like the plus one's great but then so is the baby unison plus one yeah. um or is it Honestly, a plus two? I think it's a plus two. It's plus two, um, yeah. It's plus two. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. So green sucks, but blue yeah, decent. Blue is looking good. Like for speci specifically for blue. A uh, little did you know for you guys who don't know the cover actually hits our cards ignoring barrier just because of the wording of the card it doesn't actually say choose. Yeah. So that's pretty yeah. spicy. So like the fact that blue now has access to the quote unquote ignoring barrier removal is quite mm. quite nice. And on top of that as well, honestly, I think the best home. Being, uh, for these two new blue SR cards, totally not biased because it's my favorite blue leader, Android yep. 16. My boy is actually kind of lit, oh. you know? You nah. know that arrival effect, 16 arrivals, yeah. free marker on the hit, it's looking pretty good. But uh, I, <laughs> that deck's kind of slept on, I think, but it's uh, it's not fun to verse uh, blue mirror matches with that deck because you just auto lose because <laughs> you don't get your ramp. But yeah, I don't even blue, blue, I think, got the most love this, um, this yeah. set, honestly. It got yeah, the best uh, SRs by far. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, yellow also got a bit as well oh, between that Goku. Stuff, yeah. Some people have been pretty high on the Turles, the one that can come down for two, the five drop. Yeah, that I, pretty good. I, I actually am not a fan. You're not? Why so? I, okay, so this is the thing. It's a weird card that I think is very good, but not very playable. And it's like this weird divide where... So the card is good. It does a lot. It can come down for two pretty easily. It's a 20 or 25k double strike. I believe it's 20k. It's 20k, 20K yeah, 20k. yeah, 20k. Yeah. It, and then it removes a threat, and it either removes a second threat or draws a card. That's all really good, but the couple of problems is, one, the threat that it removes is a rested battle card for less. Rested battle cards, especially weaker rested battle cards, are already things that are pretty easy to remove with like a leader swing the, or a battle card swing. Just, to, like just to butt in, yeah. my dude, it's yeah. the the first auto is just any battle card in rest. Oh, well, it is any battle card. Okay. Not no, both, both, barrier, but... are, no, both of the effects oh, no. are just any any energy cost. Yeah, okay. rested battle card. Just has, just has to be in rest. Yeah. yeah, that's a bit better. But even so, like <laughs> rested battle cards without barrier are already the easiest sort of card type to remove like yeah it's nice if you can tag like say their pan that we spoke about before because you don't have to combo up into a 40k and drawing cards nice but like all of this is good and it's a good amount of rate but i can't remember the last time games and decks were really decided about cards that were just played for like above average rate if you get what i mean like it does a lot of things but i don't know if it be... does enough relevant things i think the card would be crazy if it was an activate battle instead of an oh 100 yeah i think that would be pretty silly then I think, like, yeah, I, like I quite like this top. card. I think it's, like, for what it is, it's pretty balanced. So, like, the card I just compared this to instantly is just Bardock mm -hmm. Raiders Warcry. Um, yep. More in the sense that technically both these cards cost two. Um, the difference yep. being that, um, well, for combo-wise specifically, you have to combo out the Bardock so it, can, um, mm -hmm. so it can be a dead card in hand. But the Bardock also does sure. replace itself as well, mm -hmm. which they both do. And you do have access to playing the Bardock on turn two and also during your opponent's turn. Um, I do think this still is uh, You have to play it on turn three. You need three more energy. I'm, I'm talking about Bardock Raiders Warcry. Oh, Bardock Raiders Warcry. Yeah, yeah, like you can play it on turn two. For the, like, of course, obviously for this tells, yes, your leader has yeah. to be a mono yellow Saint, and yes, it is only if you have three yeah. more energy. But I think, like, depending on the board state, like, just say now your opponent has two big bombs, just instantly being able to clear both those bombs is still high value. And at worst, it just kills something and draws. So I still think the card 
should be main deck. I think the card is too powerful yeah. not to main deck if your leader yeah. is a mono yellow sand. I feel like you're just oh, doing yeah, yourself yeah. a disservice if you're not playing this card between your main or side. Yeah. It just has too much utility, I think. Like, yeah, Honestly, I'm which... on the... Yeah, let me butt in for a sec, because this yeah. I haven't been talking for a while. This is I'm uh, gonna yellow in Icarus main there. here. He gets to play three yellow, of this card. Yeah, I was, was going to say yellow, yellow Icarus main here. So honestly, if you're playing yellow Icarus, you should be playing three to four copies of this card. Honestly, what yellow lacked before was some sort of removal, removal. right? Like, if you played Yellow Icarus before, you'll realize that the deck doesn't have too much removal, apart from the Trunks Unison, which was your kind of main removal piece, right? And yeah, Turles yeah. offers that removal, and it's also better. Now that you've lost uh, Bojack with the Aegis, you can play some bad Aegis cards if you want no. to, if you like, yeah. but Raiders Warcry is not that feasible anymore because it does cost you two energy. So I think Mono Yellow Icarus is probably the better way to go right now. And having Turles is actually really good because also one thing we didn't mention before, it is actually a 5k combo. It doesn't yeah. cost you anything to combo. It's not like you can, it's never dead, you know, you can just combo up for five and you're pretty good. Yeah. It also removes two things. Like it, it's a yeah. huge utility card. So I agree with John for sure. Like I yeah. honestly think ye yellow Turles is. Good. I think, I think if you can, if your leader is a yellow sand, I think you're just kind of low key trolling if you're not playing this card. It's just too good. Like, yeah, again, I mean, Benny literally yeah. said it himself, like, the yellow doesn't have any, like, good board clear, really. Like, you have the Trunks Unison, but the Trunks Unison's really good, but in theory, it actually gets kind of power crept by this card, because you only really played the Trunks Unison to be able to clear something, and Tellers cost one less, and it doesn't eat up your Unison slot, and I think since the Zalmos has been moved to the ban list, I think people are going to start experimenting mm. with Meki Kibora. I think that Unison's actually cracked, if you can find it in the right deck, like... For example, we are talking about it before, Golden Freezer, you can easily play mm. the Meki Kibora Unison because you actually get access to untapping your energy. Um, yeah. Yes, it's a bit harder now that Bojack is uh, no longer with us, rest in peace Bojack, but um, you know, is what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I think people will start experimenting for Blue Yellow um, mm. because there are cards like the Goku Black, which do let you untap a um, blue yellow at the end of your turn as well as providing a bunch of like block utility and as, as well as like the new kepler card like that's another card we haven't actually discussed yet this new kepler is actually insane the only thing i will say about it, though it's more catered for blue leaders i don't think you'll be seeing yeah. this card played in yellow decks but for blue leaders specifically yeah. mainly because it does cost two blue um, energy mm. and one yellow to arrival. Most of the time, how it would work is like, oh, I'm playing blue yellow with a yellow leader. All right, I'm only charging one blue yellow energy, and yeah. vice versa with um like blue. It's like yeah. mainly still play your color with the splash. So, um, yeah, I think the I Kefla's did do a little. Good. I did do a little testing of Kefla in some yellow decks, and yeah, you're you're pretty much on the money there. That double blue cost is a it's little too bit too heavy from my testing. Maybe someone will crack it with the exact right leader, but uh. Yeah. It's just been too high of a cost, in my opinion. Yeah. Honestly, the best deck um... to play it in right now is definitely Soul Striker. Striker. Like, yeah. 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 It's a specific blue leader has to be Soul Striker because of the energy manipulation that you get. Like, being able to have an extra two energy, like, you can, like, literally awaken, you know, swing with leader, bean, and then just arrival with the rapid movement, spin the Kefla, and do a lot of damage. Yeah. Really amazing, yeah. That, that honestly, it... oh, that was my card pick for this set. That's, like, oh, yeah? in terms of artwork. And also it's playability. I, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. There's a two-drop blue-yellow hit card that you can charge without energy exhaust if you've yeah. got a U6 in play or yeah. something, right? I've tried that. Yeah. I think just U6 as an archetype right now is not it. <laughs> it is not it. It's just yeah. Also, the the game has evolved in the sense where U6 kind of does what it like was good for its time because it was like kind of beginning to be like that free play era as well as like the tapping energy era, era maybe mm. with like Khalifa and that. But now, like, majority of the things you can do in this game cost, like, zero energy anyway. Like, a lot of the crazy stuff you can do. So it doesn't really matter if you're just tapping something. <laughs> it says, like, whatever. <laughs> it's like, am I play my Khalifa for free, tap an energy, or oh, my opponent still does the whole turn anyway. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, the, yeah. like, ever since set 10, the meta kind of changed from, like, before you would rarely want to tap out on a turn. And now, yeah. like, with all the free counterplays and, and free yeah. negates and stuff, yeah, and blockers and all this stuff, yeah, you just... You tap out almost every time. Like, you just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, like... It's kind of interesting. I think it's, like... I think it's still a pretty good change from set 10, right? Because now it's, like... The game's kind of evolved where the, the game's kind of, like, focused purely on unisons. Not not purely, obviously. You can play certain decks yeah. without a unison, but unisons are just genuinely, like, so powerful because they're, like, very hard to interact with them to begin with. And then it's also, like, they enable so many free counterplays, mm -hmm. like... 
if you're going, if you're like green, for example, right, they have, they at the time, sit and had like the best green unison stuff that had Domega one drop, which is like, you play mm -hmm. it, it's not getting removed, and it also has barrier removal, it also enables Freeze a Charismatic Villain from turn one, so your opponent literally can't yeah. play battle cards, and then they also had the best, uh, one of the best floodgates in the game mm -hmm. at the time being Dormant Potential Unleashed, Dormant so Potential. yeah, this then, all, all these cards cost uh, free, <laughs> they don't cost you anything, you know, after you have your unison in play, yeah. so... Yeah, the game has changed a fair bit. They need to uh, bring Minus Killies on back and print it in this Mythic booster. <laughs> oh, yeah, true, for sure. The card is actually toxic. People are just looking at it. The card is not it. The card is pretty OP. <laughs> yeah. nah, but just on the point of like being not able to play Unisons, I feel the best way to put it is that Unisons definitely set the pace. They set the yeah. rules of engagement. Like, yes, there are decks that won't play a Unison for whatever reason, but they're doing it intentionally and they've always got in the back of the mind well okay can i beat trunks can i beat charismatic are, are my big plays stopped by one or both of those two if not maybe i have to go back to the drawing board on this yeah. Yeah. i think it's nice just a game that has interactions you know like you have to play yeah, exactly. around things it's, it's not like back like back in the old days you know like yeah. right now you actually have to think i mean i think DP, uh, dps is the only card game that i play but i think there's a lot of interactions that you actually have to think about that Makes it a bit harder for beginners to kind yeah. of join in the I'll, game. I'll, for this. Yeah. I'll say, I think DBS is like one of the hardest card games to actually play. <laughs> it's like, mainly because the game is like, for let's just say now you're a brand new card player, yeah? There's like Pokemon, there's Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, whatever, right? I think it's like in the same, I think DBS is in the position where it's like, very similar to Magic with the amount of stuff you can do between both plays mm. turns, and the systems are fairly similar as well. But then you have the uniqueness of Dragon Ball. It's like, well, okay, every card's kind of relevant because I need to put it into my energy. Every card's kind of relevant because yeah. it goes into the combo step, etc., etc., and just goes on and on and on. Like every card has to be able to have like all like insane value in like almost every situation. It's like, all right, I'm running this card. Does it does it handicap me if I have to put it in my energy? If I draw this card early, can yeah. I use it for anything? Damn, I drew this card. I can't combo it off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's so many like intricacies to like that. That's why when you see high level gameplay in Dragon Ball, it's actually just you can just feel the mastery of the game, which is quite nice. Yeah. It's just like yeah, but I don't I don't think you get that from any other card game from at least like my brief research like pokemon's literally just glorified solitaire mm -hmm. and then um <laughs> and then um <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is just like all right i opened the better hand i just win so I've, I've played a lot of different card games i've played a lot of magic i've played a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. i've played a lot of dead card games like duel masters and such and dragon ball is definitely the most interactive as you say the fact that every card is effectively a three-way split card between its actual text it's charging and then it's combo power if it's a battle card is a big thing there, that said, they have done some very much smart things to mitigate that, with very rare exception, like mill, burn, everything has to go through the combo step. Yep. Everything. Oh, sorry, the combat step, rather. So, like, the parts where you do have to interact, it's not like, say, magic with instance, which can be played at any time, basically. Like, you do anything. It's like, all right, uh, moving to battle phase. Yep, before we do that, I'm going to play this card and kill your creature or whatever. Dragon Ball doesn't have that, so you really only have to learn in, like, very specific discrete spots which is very nice i feel yeah and it gives you that i think the only yeah i think the only time that like the in uninteractive stuff that's popped up um was like in Boca for a period of time mm. with the catastrophic blows oh, true, true, true. um yeah. and then obviously back in the day um going the super shenron into the yep. awakened power on the extra yeah. turn like that that were like the two instances i think of the the most uninteractive way of losing a game um and bandai did a pretty good job of like you know neutering that i guess yeah. it didn't live for too long yeah. so absolutely honestly huge props to bandai though i think like like because at the end of the day bandai is just here to make money right like at that, bandai's mm. end goal is like is this game profitable yes or exactly. no the game is pretty profitable from like from what i'm saying like it sells well yeah, yeah people yeah. are buying products and that but the fact that they actually listen to their community is just insane <laughs> it's just like I yeah, I was actually going to um, I was actually going to bring that up. Like we're talking about yeah. this set, and you know, people are complaining that you know there's not enough. The archetypes aren't strong enough. But what we're like, what we're dealing with is a result of <clears throat> Bandai listening to the community. Like you know, they they heard that oh you know this is too strong. They heard that you know we don't we don't want power creep. Like and then they're they're trying to tune it back. They might have tuned it back a little bit too much, and then yeah. we get weak cards. And then but like and then it doesn't sort of move the meta forward. But like they're the you know, they're the best. They're the best uh, game creator in terms of like listening to the community. Whether that's a bad thing, like Konami, when you know 
when I used to deal with Yu-Gi-Oh, they sort of just, they just print cards, you know, they don't care about anything. They just, you know, do, do the ban list, whatever they want. And like, it sort of just, it just goes along and everyone just, you know, you know, they, they whinge, but they just cop it and move. And like, I don't know if they're listening too much to the players, but I, yeah, it's, it's, it's good though. It's, it's really good. Yeah. I want to give another example of like why ban- I think Bandai is exa- insane. Yeah. The, the, the product they're coming up next year, I know, I don't know if a lot of us are going to buy it. The um, Mythic Booster with a lot of reprints. Yeah. Bandai does not have to do this. Bandai can mm-hmm. literally say, if you're on these cards, where's the wallet, you know? Like, yeah, of course, they're not, you're not buying directly from Bandai. You're going to another reseller, etc., etc. But it does, like, the cards, prices that, aren't, that are in this Mythic Booster, until the Mythic Booster comes out, it's like, well, how am I meant to find, like, my championship pack cards from all these years ago? Well, like, yeah. you can't. You just pay up, like, you know, you gotta take, a, like, a small loan to buy some cardboard, right? <laughs> and the fact yeah. that they're doing this, and the thing is as well, they're not just doing random cards. Yeah, some of the cards might be a little like, oh, why is this card being reprinted, right? But pretty much every card you see, it's like, this makes sense why this is getting reprinted. Zamasu, mm-hmm. this card is a really powerful draft box card from, like, you know, the fourth draft box set. Where they're reprinting yeah. it, so it's uh, more accessible to players. It's just three Gogeta, Thwarting the Dark Empire, a promo that literally came out two sets ago, literally like six months yeah. ago. There is no reason yeah, in the world yeah. Bandai has to reprint this card, and they're doing it. Same with the Broly promo. They did the um the One Drop Broly promo when it first came out. All right, it's in the next event pack. Oh, we're reprinting in the Mythic Booster. So honestly, like I have a lot of respect for Bandai because yeah. uh, what they're doing, it like of course at the end of the day they do have to make money, but they're keeping the players like like players like all right, this is what the players are asking for. We'll deliver like tenfold. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with sense. it. Like, I agree with you completely, but it's also a smart business decision from them be- for that exact point that you <laughs> yeah. made. Like, if you want some of these cards, you can't get them from Bandai. You can't get them in a box. You can't yeah. win them at locals. You have to go and buy them from whoever's happy to part ways with the yeah. card. Yeah. However, if Bandai decides, all right, you know, these cards are powerful. They're selling for X amount of money on the secondary market. Yeah. Why don't we reprint them? And then we can actually get some of the money that these people are forking out for those cards. Um, and I think that's super smart. And it works both ways. Bandai make money. People that don't have access to the cards or can't necessarily afford them or justify spending the money on them yeah. will be more than happy to buy a box or buy some packs and, and yeah. hope that they open a thwarting the Dark Empire instead of paying 160 bucks for one or whatever it works out to. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Makes yeah. Sense. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. There's also the anniversary boxes, which are... Fantastic. The best product they've ever made. Yeah, yeah like some, <laughs> some, some a little bit more hit, some a little bit more missed, but you're always going to get that with products as well. Yep. And also, I'm a big fan of the fact that we get reasonable bandless breakdowns, not as good as we used to, and that's probably going to be a, a discussion for another day. I've been doing some research into that, as well as the um the the DBS Direct stream that they've just started doing the. Maybe the that's YouTube cool. videos have been doing. I think it's kind of I've cool. I've been liking those. No, I've been really liking the DBS yeah. Direct. I hope they do more with it. Yeah. A live Q&A would be fantastic, but I don't know if they want to open up that floodgate yet, but um, that's see like, how we go. That's yeah. Like not also it. with the translation. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a bit hard. Is there like... Well, yeah. It is... It is funny though. This is like a Japanese company, like Japanese like company now. It's making game, like a game for like English audience. It's like fairly. Yeah. I think their like the de- design philosophies would have been pretty different coming in compared to like mm. what it turned out turned out to be. I guess yeah. that's just a hindsight yeah. thing though. Um, yeah. 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 So speaking of anniversary box, like the the SS4 archetype that you know the um mm. the guy won the event with it like a few a few weeks ago, but did, it seems yeah. like it's seems like it's sort of still sleeping like people are still sleeping on it like do you guys rate it for nationals or i you um, like it it hasn't really come up apart from that top but apart from that win like i think you can beat majority of meta decks with the deck but my only complaint or well, the biggest problem with the deck is that when you sit opposite an ss4 player you can literally you can literally mm. telegraph every single turn that your opponent will do the deck is super linear like yeah what it does is actually really powerful and the leader effect is absurd but you go you know from turn to turn you literally look at their energy it's like all right i know he has this up or he's gonna do this he's gonna do that it's like it's one of the most telegraphed decks of all time so in in saying that like i think you'll be able to catch some people who don't really know what the deck does they've never really faced it but for someone who just knows what the deck does it's like oh okay i can't do this this turn oh they're gonna do that that turn i think it has a spot with um even with the new ss4 SCR that's coming out which i think that card is pretty good i think it's actually pretty mm-hmm. slept on um I think it's like it can make some waves. I think it'll be able to like take, um, like could potentially top depending on the pilot. But I think it's a deck that the it's it not a hard deck to play, but it also means the ceiling of the deck isn't very high either. If that makes sense. 
Yeah. yeah, I feel like um, each time they printed, well, the last two anniversary boxes, the archetypes that they printed AOD and then the SS4 have both been like a good starting point. Like if you're a newish player and you want to jump into the game, you don't want to spend a bomb on, on a deck, yeah. you can buy the cards from the anniversary boxes and have a super playable deck straight out of the box that's like probably tier two-ish, um, you know, a good locals deck, a good starting point, and then you can go from there. If you like the game, you can jump into it. I think they've done a really good job with with both the last two anniversary box archetypes. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We love, I love, I love anniversary box. Definitely my favorite yeah. product of every year that I look forward to because they have amazing reprints for beginners as well. You can just like yeah. trade them if you want. Like collectors will want them, like players will want them. So yeah, the anniversary box is always amazing. All right, guys. So Jesse just um had to step out. His phone just died, um unfortunately. So he won't be with us for the rest of the podcast. But um we've only got one really big topic left to talk about, and uh it is um nationals coming up. So obviously we have the um American nationals happening a week before the um Oceanic nationals, which I assume most of us will be playing in. Um and you know we're just gonna briefly talk about what we think of like the meta will be um heading into it. So we briefly touched on before how this particular meta is fairly open. You can kind of like win with any deck really. You can have a good showing with any deck that you're fairly comfortable on, as well as like you know have the right tech choices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we're just gonna talk about briefly kind of like not necessarily a tier list, but just some decks we think will have a good showing. Um, I'll just throw out like two I think will have a good showing off the top of my head. I think Soul Striker is an easy favorite. I think it's by far the best blue deck right now after the new ban list. Like, yes, I oh, know blue lost Galactic Buster, but Soul Striker was already untapping energy with its leader skill anyway. And the fact that Zamasu's gone, Zamasu was a card that answered Soul Striker on its own. The fact that Soul Striker wasn't able to consistently awaken on that turn three, and now the card that answers that has been eroded, I think Soul Striker stonks just go through the roof, and especially with like the addition of Kefla. I think it's the, I think the best build will be blue yellow. But um, you can see some mono build builds as well. But um, yeah, I think Soul Striker is uh, where it's at right now. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just just for the context of those at home, uh, what format are we talking about here? So this is American Nat, so best of best of three here. Um, we can talk about oh, a bit of best of one and best of three. We can talk about both. But I just think in general, like even for yeah. best of one, I think Soul Striker is insane. I think in yeah. best of three will be even better because it's like a deck that is very flexible. If that makes sense, you can have a lot of you can run a variety of cards in your sideboard. So I think Soul Striker is like if I were to put money on a deck that should do really well or yeah. should win, I would say Soul Striker for sure. So on the Soul Striker note, I want to throw a little bit of a, a dark horse at you here, and I actually think that SS three has the payoffs like i think it plays like the kale fantastically well i think it can play that new carva fantastically well it's just a question of if somebody can figure out how to deal with its early game hand games uh hand size problems so against cell surge and aggro i think if that deck gets cracked it does very well but i think there's a very real chance it doesn't get cracked i think soul strike is the safer pick but i think if somebody figures it out uh ss3 is actually even stronger than striker just due to that untapped three ability Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think the the trickiest thing like going into Nats is just Swiss in general. Like with the format being pretty wide open, like I'm I'm more of a fan of like playing rogue and and playing stuff that's a bit off meta in general anyway, but it's also a bit easier to do that when you know like the only two top decks going into a format are X and Y. Yeah. So you can kind of just plan for that. But when you can well in this case turn your webcam on and be facing literally any of probably 10 different leaders like it's it's very hard to sort of set your deck up and if we end up playing best of one you know you kind of got to try and toolbox for everything and you can't really do that so it's it's tricky i think like obviously cell surge um has a really good best of one matchup uh so i expect to see probably at least a couple in the top cut um but yeah outside of that um i'm not too sure what else i mean Maybe some red aggro, like red Broly is making a bit of a comeback. Yeah, yeah I think red Broly, people are starting to see that as like one of the top dogs for red decks. It um, won an event over the previous weekend, so. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Uh, I think Goji to Zeno, because, you know, I like black, and it's probably one of the best yep. um, aggro decks for black. But the only problem is, uh, it's loose to itself. Yeah, RNG is a problem, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Gambler, you know, yeah. gambler's problem, you know, just luck sometimes doesn't exactly. work, you know. <laughs> Another big thing is, being a black deck, if we are forced into a best of one format, it is a lot easier to main board Deborahs, because you can just charge them, yep. 
or even yeah. play them if you're expecting Cell Surge. Yellow decks also have a little bit of that luxury with uh, Draw Ape as well. So that's yeah. something to consider, I feel. Yeah, I know Um, I know. before we are talking about how green kind of got the shaft of this set, but mm-hmm. there's actually some tools that Cell Surge gets access to. Like, there is an argument to potentially run the King Vegeta Unison or even the Nappa Unison mm-hmm. um, over mm-hmm. um, Dark Broly. Of course, I do think that you still would use Dark Broly as your primary Unison mm-hmm. since it has the value with the Freezer Zeno Engine. You just rip so many cards out of your opponent's hand. Yeah. But, you know, King Ooh, Vegeta, yeah. ignoring Barry is pretty good. And even Nappa, uh, uh, sending a card to the warp is a very underrated ability. Mm-hmm. I uh, was playing Raditz for a bit, literally just Cell Surge build, just slap the Raditz, and that deck felt really good. I was surprised. I was like, "Is this an actual deck?" Because like, Raditz, this, this shouldn't have been an actual deck, you know. Uh, you know, what I was gonna say it is. It is an actual deck if black decks don't exist. Yeah, that deck yeah. gets hard to counter by black. But even like yeah. the fact that like a lot of the yeah, a lot of the answers that people have for hand control are a big part of this card mm-hmm. game in general, actually, is the amount of the um interaction you have with cards in your drop area. There's so many effects that you can only resolve if they're in the drop area, whether it's like Bardock Draw Ape, the Goku Draw Ape, even Ribrian, whatever. Sending a card to warp, it actually feels kind of toxic from hand. You just like, oh yeah, I'll use my Nappa ability, warp a card. It makes it so much harder. It's like, oh, if I warp my Draw Ape, I don't get to use it. If I warp my Nappa, uh, I can't use it. Uh, my Deborah, sorry, I can't use this effect. So I think... um. The ability for SS3 um, Nappa Warping stuff might be something people experiment in Cell Surge, might see some little different builds. And as well, I also think it's the first time that Cell Surge actually has an SCR you can call its own with the new Wicked Saiyans SCR. I think it's the mm. perfect card for it. The ability essentially getting your fifth through Brienne in the early game, plus it being a 40k dual attack blocker. I think it just gives um, Cell Surge unexpected utility it didn't really need, but it just gets it. So it's just a good card. Yeah. I, I really know. like the I really like the Wicked Saiyans. I think in all hand destruction deck, like you know, the the card's just pretty broken. Yeah, the artwork's beautiful as well. It's got really hard to get on the way, but yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite SCR from the new set yeah. in terms of art. Like, obviously, not having any protection, um, depending on the deck you're running into, you, you might struggle to get it out. But even just the pressure of having them have like need to deal with the card itself. Yeah. Um, can have some value plus it's an extra card for an arrival if you're running some of that engine yeah. in your cell surge or it's an extra 10k for free so yeah exactly yeah like i honestly right. think if you're playing cell surge then you just auto win the game if you play that turn too if you want me to be completely yeah. honest i think it just lets you win for free that's how good it is. I, think... I think it is in that deck yeah i think it's powerful i i'm not a big fan of it being a punisher effect i think that's gonna bite people people always tend to overrate punisher effects because your opponent gets a monicum of control over that and that always makes yeah. the card worse that said i think the big get there is the arrival stuff you're doing there, but also just cell surges always struggled for playable yellow cards for its awakened skill it wants yeah. to be like cell surge would be a lot better of a deck i feel if it was mono green and it had some sort of arrival condition. So just having another playable yellow green card or playable yellow card is yeah. a big get here. And I think I think you're going to be charging that under your leader for Awaken more often than you think you will, in my opinion. Yeah, I, 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 agree um, with that. I think one card I haven't actually seen in too many cell surge lists lately is the Champ Pack Android 18 from last year oh, yeah. year before uh, the oh, that's a free combo if you've got five or less in hand yeah is it, that's about yeah, yeah so it's a it's a 10k combo that if you've got five or less you can combo for free um and it's green yellow so yeah. in my cell search build i've actually been running three of that and then obviously you've got the four nine drop cell xenos which is pretty big value on the turn like if you hit turn three and you go dark broly and then you awaken and you put that nine drop under it when you chuck that back in your drop to activate your rest effect then you just sack it off and draw another card like it's it's such a crazy turn turn yeah. three and so like anytime i play cell surge if i get to turn three without losing the game i just feel like i've won the game at that point yeah i think as well like the point i was making before like if uh, when i say i think if you're able to drop the wicked saints card on turn two i think you win the game because back what we were saying before one of the big things that could be like a bit qu- iffy about is that your opponent actually gets to choose what effect kind of resolves it's either they tap four of their cards or you get to play it and they have to discard two and the reason why i think it's insane let's just say now you're going first as a cell surge player your opponent probably doesn't have four cards to tap if you're going like on your next turn so you just play it out for free and like what are they going to do they can't kill you through a 40k blocker and it's like okay <laughs> and they discard two cards all right there's your fifth of Brienne, so i think that's another deck that you can yeah. really um like look out for i think it is um absolutely yeah, not going to be uh, the greatest, the funnest yeah. matchup for sure. Well, I was going to say, so you want interactive gameplay. Next <laughs> minute, everyone here well, talking about Cell Surge. What yeah. are we... Cell Surge is Solitaire. Yeah. It's actually yeah. Solitaire. I think it's the like... Last... Oh, sorry, yeah. No, you go, you go, you go. I was just saying, the last point I want to make on the Wicked Saiyans when we move off that card is we did note it had a lack of protection. 
but due to the way its auto is worded, even if it gets hard countered by something like, say, a Trunks, the its off. effects still resolve there. So you do... Since I feel like the big part is getting that discard two or the tap down four, you do still get like sort of a half deflect there, which is kind of nice and does make the card a little bit better than it may read in, in an initial first blush. It's funny if they god sealing it, you can literally resolve it your next turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, I yeah, it's almost, you probably want them to god sealing it because they yeah. discard two and you get it back. It doesn't go anywhere because it's still in your hand and then you just play it again next turn. But yeah. I feel like most of the time on Cell Surge, you really want to be drawing two on turn two. Like, mm. because yeah. like once they once you get to turn four or five, obviously you're trying to end the game, but your hand is still getting quite low as well. Because by the time you start like chucking Deburas at your unison and doing all that kind of stuff, you start losing quite a lot of cards out of your own hand as well. Exactly. Look, I don't play Cell Surge. I'm a good person, yeah. so I don't know all the intricacies. That's all I'm going to say. I was gonna say, <laughs> say look, if you look at if you look at Glenn's avatar there, you know, you surely yeah. you know what deck he's playing for nationals, you know. <laughs> Yes, Gotex. Gotex is the deck I'm playing for that. Yeah. I will say though, oh, <laughs> one thing I want to yeah. nice. One thing I want to see is a uh, cell surge uh, with like two energy up. Swing in, try to get the wicked sands. It gets trunks back to the hand. They awaken mid battle. Just do it again in that same battle and just watch well, the blue play. Just... They'll still have to discard two cards. It's like, yeah. really not worth god sealing us. Kind of a uh, scamming nice. yourself there. Is it's it's, oh, it's got to be someone misreading it, but it will be funny. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, if you god sealing it, there you go. You ditch yeah. three. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you ditch three, and then you ditch two more for free the next yeah. turn, yeah. and I exactly. rebrand the next turn. Well, while we're on the topic of the, the set 15 oh. SCRs, I'm under the opinion. Like, I briefly mentioned it before, but I think the SS4 SCR is actually mm -hmm. super slept on. I think it reads just mm -hmm. so incredibly well. I've tried it in some defensive decks, and for those people who aren't familiar with what, what the card does exactly, it's a counter-attack card that says on the card, for each color card in between your and your opponent's battle area and energy area, your leader card gains 5,000 power for each color, and for, and for each card as well, you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and send it to the warp. So, in my perspective, right, let's just say now you're playing a monocolor deck. I've actually tested this in um, a couple of monocolor decks. So, you're playing, we'll say yellow, for example, right? Sure. Then you're, the chances are that you're versing a different color deck is fairly high. Like, you're not 100% going to do color mirror mirror, so like maybe a blue or whatever, right? So, that's two colors automatically. And let's just say now there's a black battle card in play, et cetera, et cetera. Your dual color, there's so many ways it can go up. But let's just say yeah. at a baseline, you're only, there's only two colors, right? You're sure. gaining 10,000 power defensively, and you're clearing two of your opponent's cards, ignoring barrier. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a single card in the game that can do that for one energy on your opponent's turn. I just think yeah. this card reads insane. I feel like some people, for more control decks, are going to experiment with this card, because I think it's just absurd. It's like a hatch, like a border, pseudo hatch with like insane board clear. So I just yeah. want to hear yeah, your the, thoughts the on that. The power gain for turn, the power gain for turn is the big thing. Like yeah. when you're playing against these low to the ground aggro decks and they're typically swinging with heaps of 15Ks, normally a bean is enough to sort of deter that. But yeah. now you, for the same energy, you get to remove two of their threats or potentially yeah. three or four and get a massive power boost for the turn and no one's going to swing into that. So you're right, like it's it could definitely be clutch. Yeah, notably it doesn't have the uh, when you play this card, remove it from the game rider that a lot of SCRs yeah, has. I don't baby. think there's a way to rebuy it. <laughs> no, there's not. Like, oh, actually, no, Vijex. Vijex could shuffle it back in. True, true. Is that worth doing? No, but you could. That's crap. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's go for Jex for that reason. True, true. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's something to keep in mind, I guess. Yeah, I don't know, I just... I just think it's insane. Like, I feel yeah. like for, for example, back to the point we were talking about before, yellow doesn't really have best ways to clear battle cards, mm. let alone barrier battle cards. So even testing this in, um, again, we were talking about before, Golden Freezer, I played it a bit in that deck. It just yeah. felt insane playing it. It bought me an extra turn, and my deck is a control yeah. deck. I got an extra turn, and oh, you have two barrier cards? Well, not anymore. I'm going to out of here, you know? So I think... Had I think two barrier cards. Had, had two barrier, nice. I don't know. I yeah, think that card's kind exactly. of slipped on. I just wanted to hear you guys' no, thoughts on it. Uh, look, I yeah, I think if you're it. playing any color that's not blue, then you could, and you're trying to be like mid range or kind of defensive, then you could definitely make an argument for it. But in blue, I think I'd just play Hatch. Hatch like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think you can't play it in blue. It's just yeah, Hatch exists. Yeah. I think it's like Hatch's effect is so broken, <laughs> just to yeah. be able to be like, all right, we pass the turn back to me. I do think it's a card that people should consider. I think it's like yeah. not being talked about as much as it should be, in my opinion. Plus, the art's pretty sick too. The art, if you're is, pretty into dope. The art is pretty dope. I think the main contention is, or the main competition in most decks is Kai, 
Yeah. And I think it can definitely... If you want to lean more defensive, this is arguably better. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely worth definitely worth an explore, I feel. Yeah, cool. I'm justified buying it now, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good card. Like, honestly, like a lot of secret rares are pretty good right now. Like You're not really locked into like one secret rare, honestly. Yeah. If, you have hero- if you have Heroine's Lineage, it's still, good, it's still a good budget secret rare, you know? Yeah. It's still... I think a lot of these secret rares will probably like drop, drop in price as well. So yeah, it's actually crazy to think about. For the longest time, the SER, this is how the SER pool kind of worked. All right, you're blue, you have to play Hatch. No questions asked. You're playing yeah, yellow, yeah. green. You play Cell Zeno. <laughs> no questions asked. Oh, uh, you're yeah. not either of those two things. You're playing Kai. No question asked. So it's kind of nice that the SER pool's kind of like yeah. expanded a bit, and it feels nice as well because I don't. I think how Bandai used to design SCRs, like, if you see this card, you win the game. Now it's kind of like, this effect is pretty insane. It's going to win you the game, but it's going to set you up pretty hardcore to win the game, which I think is a lot better than how they designed yeah, all it. The, like, I gotta, just to touch on the fact that you said that, all the old SCRs, they're always like, turn 5, I'm yeah, going to turn 5, yeah. turn 5. But, but now it's not, yeah, now it's now like, it's yeah, it gives you like... Um, <laughs> I try to give you tempo, you know, like, you know, yeah. like, it, yeah. yeah, we see that them do that a lot, you know, it's trying to give you tempo, swing it back in your favor, like, they've been doing that a lot, so, you know, yeah, I it's, think it's, it's a, pretty nice. It's a lot cooler as well, because it feels like, let's just say you're getting railed by, like, some aggro decks, like, damn, I can't use this awesome card mm-hmm. I spent, like, a grand on, <laughs> for the, some of the old ones anyway, but now it's, like, a couple hundred bucks, it's, like, this awesome card, I can't use it to, like, turn five, but now it's, like, oh, I can use it now, it's cool. Yeah. I think that's... It's probably slightly a byproduct of the fact that we didn't see turn five for about three metas. No, so... no, 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 Don't say that, Glenn. Don't say that. We get a turn five now. Easy. Play Soul Strike. I'll see you in 20 turns. What are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm going to play Hatch, boys. So Hatch. see you there. Yeah. The Definitely going to turn five. The amount of times I played Baby last meta, though, and just in the blue mirrors got to 11 energy so I could have up uh, Fu Shrouded plus Baby Ape was uh, notable. Pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that was... Uh, those are some long days. Didn't eat much lunch. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I don't say, want to play best yeah. of three in that match. Yeah. 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 Will, you're drawing best of ones, all right? So you better not play that. Oh, I'm not playing baby anymore. That deck died. Yeah. Deck is pretty unplayable now. But yeah. yeah. Um. All right, guys. We've been talking for about an hour, so I think we're going to wrap yeah. that up for today. Uh, for those guys listening, let us know what you guys thought. Let us know if you guys enjoyed this and be keen to... um to um, listen to us every week and also feel free to ask us questions I'm, I'm sure everyone will be willing to talk about it in next week's episode we might even get a reply from uh, some of the players and um, yeah just thank you guys so much for listening and that'll be us for this week we'll see you all next time I'm just going to say goodbye yeah. you guys can say goodbye if you want I was going to say a quick quick shout out to obviously uh, Collector's Company this is our team uh, Collector's Company Card Gaming so yeah if you haven't checked us out please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well you know uh, all the support would be much appreciated so yeah. Of course, of thank course. You for, thank, thank you for listening, everyone, and everyone who's tuned in and stayed all the way till now. Yeah. And Benny Whoring for likes. Smash the like button. Subscribe Smash now. Smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Did you know only 25% of you are subscribed? Gotcha. <laughs> I'm <trying>. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the analytics say, you know? So, yeah, you know, if, if you haven't sub- hit that red button, you know, hit do the it red now, button. You know? Hit the notification bell, smash us, smash the like button, follow us on everything. Join the collection? No, I hate join that. The, join, the, join, the, join the collection, boys. <laughs> Alright. No, oh, thank, thank you guys so much. <laughs> more, more, more. Share with your friends and family, alright? Oh, Benny has a... <laughs> Benny's so humble. But honestly, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you all next time. This is the boys. Peace. Peace. Peace.